All right, next up we've got Thomas and Maxime. And Thomas, welcome. Hi, Joe. Hello. So let's start with a little background on yourselves. Uh, I'm Thomas. I'm uh, Thomas Renault. I'm ethics instructor in ESMA uh, and more Houdini instructor. And uh, we've got with us uh, Maxime and Thomas. Uh, we're speaking a little bit more about uh, the production. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm Maxim Salvator, and uh, I just graduated from ESMA, and I'm moving to London to work as a CFX and FX artist on Houdini. And uh, me and I'm Thomas Pognipiens. I graduated in uh, September, like my friend here, and I'm actually looking for opportunities. Excellent. So what's today's presentation going to be about? The presentation is quite the talk, you know, a talk between instructor and student about the production of Trendy, Trendy is the movie they made uh, last year. And um, so, also? yeah, yeah. So, so um, we made a movie uh, done entirely in Houdini, and we wanted to share uh, our experience, experience, and just give a few examples of what it's like to work in Houdini as students. Excellent. Well, let's get started. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Thomas uh, Renault. I'm FX instructor in ESMA Montpellier. And uh, I present you uh, Maxime, uh, Florent and Thomas, uh, who are part of uh, Stranded Team. So can you tell us a bit about uh, your project, please? Uh, uh, yes, I can, make, uh, I can make it short. Uh, we are in Alaska in the 19th centuries and uh, a huge and strong trapper named Oak meet uh, uh, a giant glowy moose, herald of the apocalypse. Uh, we, we wanted to do a, a more technical movie uh, to challenge ourselves, to, to see uh, where, where we can, uh, we can go uh, at all level and, and gain uh, the maximum of level possible. Okay. And uh, but but we still wanted to do something beautiful, and so we have uh, we had some inspiration like uh, rom romanticism, yeah. and uh, to to have strong image and uh, but still a, a really strong uh, technical part too. Yeah. Focusing on the technical aspect. Okay, great. So perhaps we can watch uh, the teaser. The teaser. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. We can only show you the teaser because uh, the, the full movie is not online yet. So see you next. So um, we are a seven members team. I'm going to introduce uh, ourselves. We're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Maxime Salvatore. I worked on layout, animation, and CFX. Uh, I'm Florence Anglard. I worked on modeling, a bit of layout, and uh, I did mainly the effect. Uh, I am Thomas Pony. I was generalist, mainly surfacing and environment. And with us, four other guys, uh, Alvin Arevalo Zamora, Quentin Garraud, uh, Alvin Durez, and Alex Treguet. Quentin Garraud did uh, the animation and the rigs. Uh, Alvin Durez did a lot of things, pretty generalist guy, uh, mainly dev and uh, caramel link and blend shapes. And pipeline. Pipeline, 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 pipeline sure. Pipeline um, and uh, Alex Treguet uh, made lighting compositing. And uh, the last one, Alvin Arevalo Zamora, made uh, surfacing and pre production element. Yep. So ESMA in 3D animation, uh, the course is on four years. Houdini comes uh, in the formation only in the third and the fourth year yeah, yeah. Um, because all the beginning is in the basics of 3D and it's on Maya. Third year is a more academic approach, uh, approach of mm -hmm. Houdini. You know, it's uh, procedurali proceduralism, sorry, the word is quite difficult to say in English, <laughs> uh, because it's a basic of Houdini, Houdini is procedural and, and, and when you come from other package, uh, it's a bit difficult at the beginning to understand yeah. how it works. 
we explore the main solvers yeah. uh, and uh, uh, of course there's some exercise for a student to train, yeah. Yeah, to train but the main, the main idea is to get the philosophy of the software yeah, how it nice. works how do you have to think in the Udini way and after there's a fourth year mm. the fourth year it's the most interesting year yeah, for, for sure. everybody more for technical yeah. and for and the teachers for the teachers <laughs> because it's a year of the movie my role is not uh, only a teacher in the fourth year it's more supervising mm -hmm. the relationship between students and instructor is quite mm -hmm. different because we are working together yeah. uh, for uh, yeah like troubleshooting together mm -hmm. finding yeah. solutions yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. helping us to go to dive deeper in Udini and 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 learn a bit faster because we have to do the movie, so we have we, we have to go. Yeah, yeah we, we have deadline. We have, yeah. yeah, there's yeah. deadline, and we do very specific things, not like an overall mm -hmm. stuff. It's very very specific. Like that's where the fun begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. The third year is to not to be afraid. Yeah, about mm -hmm. with Houdini, yeah. and the fourth year is so just dive in the big pool yeah. yeah. and go on. And literally and dive in and use it. My part as instructor uh, here is more to guide you. Sometimes I give you a little if file with mm -hmm. a beginning. Focus. Yeah. Sometimes I give you, oh, look at this tutorial, mm -hmm. look at the documentation, that's something interesting. You can just dive into and, uh, and adapt for your needs because mm -hmm. it's very important and already is, is quite different for every movie, every yeah. uh, short. It's a very uh, personal thing. Mm. After this R&D part, um, you go in production and, and you go and, and you're on your own most of the time. Uh, we are the instructor team only to supervise, to look after the scheduler and sometimes to correct things because sometimes you're a student, you're learning, so you make some mistakes. So sure. we have to correct. To make sure the, f the film is finished on time. Exactly. Yeah. So good R&D is very important, as you said. It mm. saves a lot of time. I keep this, I will show this part of the video yeah, yeah, yeah. on the next studio. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. very important nice, for them nice. to, to hear it for all students. Very like important. Yeah. R&D is just about efficiency, I guess. Like sure. optimization and efficiency. Yeah. Even if it take months, maybe yeah. at the end, it's the time saver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saving time. Yeah. You're saving time. Let's talk more about Stranded. Yeah. So, <laughs> very huge challenge for you guys, but for yeah. us too. For you yeah. too. Sure. Because uh, in your movies, there's a lot of, lot of CFX and FX on each shot. Most of the movie uh, from now uh, use Maya as a HUD. But you guys ask us mm. to use Houdini as her. We decide to say yes to your demand, and 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 so then you use Houdini as her. Why this decision? Because um, you were not afraid. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were quite comfortable with Houdini at that time, yeah. but that still that was a very big challenge. That was risky. So um, why did we use Houdini as a HUD? Yeah, that's the question. Um, so. In summary, when we were writing the scripts, um, we obviously realized that there were a lot of technical things such as snow, fur, uh, clothes, realistic simulation, uh, storm, blizzard. Houdini is made for that. Yeah. That's why Houdini exists. Except for um, animation and rigging, where we wanted to stay into Maya, we're way more comfortable. We, we asked ourselves, okay, what can we do in Houdini? And we can do everything from layout to rendering. Houdini as our main software was a solution. An evidence. Mm, yes. Of course. Mm. Yes. For us, yes. So for that us. means um, no more back and forth Maya between, uh, between Maya and Houdini. Because the problem is when you're doing a lot of things in Houdini, you got to bring that into Maya. I think you have to export your LMB, so, yeah. your and I'm not talking about having retakes or tweaks yeah. <laughs> back yeah. into Houdini. Yeah. And one of the other reasons we choose Houdini as our main software is For how, factors. yeah, yeah, not just procedural assets, but also procedural pipeline. Mm, yeah. That's where it becomes interesting. And like, uh, a last one, it's um, we think Houdini in the future would be uh, like some kind of standards. Yeah, yeah mainstream in the industry. And uh, it's a new knowledge for us, so yeah. It's, yeah, so uh, doing, doing a movie with Houdini as the main software means it's a small plus. Yeah, first of all, the layout, everything is dynamic. When you are just uh, making like a very basic blocking of the scene, a rough layout, 
um, you can add assets, it just updates automatically. As soon as you update an Alembic into a folder, it just the update is is it's 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 live. Also digital assets, very, very nice way to update things uh, without taking care about who got the correct assets. Everyone connected to the library got the assets. So you, you've got always the last version of yes, of, of yes. Your yes. Asset everything is updated. Maybe. Everything is dynamic. Everything is live. Uh, the the fact that we did modeling at the same time, uh, the procedural and dynamic part was really interesting. Just version. update. You just updated in the yeah, folder. So it was really easier. Oh, well, the the pipeline was dynamic. Um, the dressing part was also uh, based on the procedurality. Uh, scatter some points, choose some point, and uh, and bring all trees for like for the forest. This we could make it an make it an asset, and we were using every shot. Yes, so it was really assets. easy. And because of Houdini can uh, can support a lot of polygons and uh, and really heavy scenes. And because they are done in Houdini, yeah. uh, every, everything is just flawless. With a great stability. And uh, it was also efficient for the look dev, I think, because when you have um, half of the, the movie was in Storm, so you have the Storm, both of the character, and uh, all the dressing in the same scene, mm. you just... Uh, you could like light it and shade yeah. it. It's, yeah, easy. sure. it's easier the same, to work the look the dev when yeah, everything sure. is in the same scene. Yeah, and uh, you could see the final result in uh, instant time. It was yeah, really well, efficient. Yeah, really efficient, yeah. Uh, this release of Runner Man for Oni was very good and stable, and yeah. that's why... It, it was really new, and uh, the fact that it happened at the beginning of our production really uh, enabled us to do it, to do everything yeah, in Houdini. All of us, all of to, us yeah. Because uh, if, if we because we learn uh, Runner Man at ESMA, and the fact that C effects, M effects, Uh, characters, dressing, it was possible to make them all in the same scene and to Thomas, Alex and Alvin to, to light it, to shade it and all at once when the computer uh, was uh, able to do it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when the workstation <laughs> got the resources because it started to be very, very because like... The fact that you, can, th that you can do heavy scenes is also a trap because you do heavy scenes <laughs> and... Yes. Uh, you got, yeah, you literally got trapped into your yeah, heavy sure. scenes. Yeah. I could do templates mm -hmm. for clothes and, and, and hair. So I could do vellum templates. I just have to import the animation into the, into the scene and, and just tweak the values. But I got one scene for every shot. So yeah, for, for, for the clothes, uh, you use vellum. Um, yes, vellum, uh, vellum clothes, yes. Yeah. And for, for all the clothes, uh, you for use the clothes, yes, yes, yes. And, and for all the hair, you use uh, the vellum hair. The vellum hair. Vellum hair so And the grooming tool. Uh, yeah, grooming tool. So groom done in Houdini. Every tricks can be done wherever you want in, in, in the network. If you got to tweak something at the beginning of the groom, it's possible. Even though if you are like at the end of the shot, almost rendering, you need to do a tweak, it's tweakable. Yeah. Uh, for the snow part, yeah. uh, especially, uh, because we had snow in almost every shot. Every shot. Uh, so, so, so. Uh, I thought that it would be easier to make it an asset. So, yeah, so I so, did so the that's RED. For the FX, so. yeah, yeah, for the FX part, yeah. 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 But it's, it's really related to the, to the CFX because the mindset is... Yeah, the philosophy is the same. You yeah. create an asset and you reuse it for every scene. Mm -hmm. That's where you, you, you gain time. So with your asset, you do, you do uh, like uh, basic settings who works for most of the situations. Yep. And uh, when you just have to bring it in, And, uh, and see with your colliders, with your animations, with your, your lighting, your shading, yeah, sure. if it works. Yeah. And if you don't, you just have little parameters to change and uh, it's just a gain of time. And a big most of time. time. Yeah. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah, most of time, yeah. We did it also for the, um, the shading because we do part of the shading in Maya. Uh, because it was easy for the organic ones at the beginning of the production. Yeah, yeah, before before yeah. deciding to switching to Udini. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, the combining with the um, library of Renderman, we could make um, little uh, pre shading for uh, just see if the modelization is quite correct. And with Udini, we have the same library thanks to Renderman, and we just drag and drop it. And with uh, a tool that Alvin Durez developed, the auto assign shader. Uh, it just set up correctly all the shader for the, the character and is why it's automatically. automatically. Automatically, sure. Yeah. It, it's seamless production. Yeah, just yeah. sure, sure. When, when it's uh, done perfectly, yeah. 
but uh, it's never that easy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was quite good. Udemy, as you know, is a very huge package. Um, I don't know everything. Mm. I'm still learning, and I have to be up to date. And, and and I watch a lot of tutorial, test a lot of things at home because um, you are you you have a lot of huge demand, and mm. and mm. we can find solution, and mm. we always do. When thing is frustrating for the teacher is I can't give you all my knowledge. I would like to, but it's yeah. not possible. We, we don't have the time. So my philosophy is to teach you how to learn Houdini. I want you, when you finish at the school, to understand. And when you are in the school, to understand what you're doing when you redo a tutorial. Mm -hmm. so that's very important because a tutorial is for a specific case. And, and that that's not your case. Mm. So you have to take it to break yeah. it and to make it rebuild it. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't understand what you're doing when you watch a tutorial, mm. that's not possible. Mm. Yeah, and since yeah. there's so much way to do one thing in Houdini, yeah. um, it's very comp it, it's very easy to get lost in Houdini. And doing step by step is not helping. So you're just reproducing, you're just copying. So it's good for like as a starter, but if you want to understand how Houdini works, you gotta understand how to learn it. Mm. And that's where you want to do to, to, to. That's my goal. That's where you can <laughs> you come in. Yes. So, uh, can you speak a bit more about specific tools you develop uh, for stranded inside Odini or not? For my part, for the effect parts, uh, I had to do a lot of snow sim, as I said earlier. So I did an asset for uh, all every shot. I st I started to at the LED part at the beginning of the production. And then uh, I, it's, it's an asset that grew all along uh, with the production because it's never, it's never finished. Yeah. Everything uh, yeah, just grow. And uh, so I had with to... With the grain solver? With the grain solver, oh. yeah. It, it was a grain solver. And uh, I did like the basic settings that uh, with the R&D part, I saw that I was working for most of the situations. We also developed um, more like no, not, no simulation, but procedural stuff. Like for example, I had the fake wind, something I call the fake wind asset. And yes. you don't have to make a cache, a file cache. You know, exactly, that's, that's where useful. there's no simulation. Yeah. I don't want to spend much time on simulation. I have already other stuff to simulate. So I don't want to use complex solvers. I want to use something very, very, very easy to... Efficient. Yeah, efficiency, efficiency, I, of course. So the fake wind, very interesting. And there's also another one, how we used uh, bend to create wind in 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 trees. In, in trees. It was almost impossible to to simulate uh, wind in the trees. So we had to think about something more optimized. And you came with the idea of the bend, and that that's where the um, the tool became like very very optimized mm. using bend to make wind in in in, in forest yeah, in trees it's a, it's a hard fx method you know yes that's rough that's and, rough uh, but it it, it worked it, uh, work. it doesn't cost anything 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 it's fully procedure you yeah. can yeah, so, jump into the timeline so you've got the no matter how many trees you got in your scene if it's instance it's okay uh, yeah that 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 uh vfx non vfx was just too for the storm part where yep. uh, i didn't want to do uh a pyrosium because yeah. I was thinking that it's it was gonna be really heavy. Yeah. So yeah, there there's a, there's a shot where there's the blizzard very very close to the camera. Yeah, and the, we're the, into the blizzard. It's too so yes. once again we thought maybe with uh, with procedural asset and with uh, no, VFX non VFX. Yeah, some noise in there. Yeah, the, noise. Yeah. Three yeah. noise. For, yeah, three fact. noise. Uh, animated and uh, and it works. Yeah, for rendering it I was think. perfect. It was. Because the uh, almost instantly, and yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we we did. You don't need to take time on simulation yeah, if you can do it yeah, procedurally. Yeah. Mm. What's next? Have yeah. you got some opportunities, work, something? Mm. Tell us. Yeah, actually, I just had an opportunity with a uh, Untold Studio in London, so I'm oh, really excited. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited about it, and um, I'll see. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm looking for opportunity actually uh, in environment and or surfacing. I'm working on my demo reel, doing some realistic animation stuff. I want to add a few things to my to my demo, not just the short film. And what about uh, the other? Um, Alex Reguet have uh, a job actually in uh, 
in London. And uh, for the other one, uh, Alvin Arevalo Zamora have an interview right yeah. now, yeah. actually. Yeah. So we, we don't know the... Yeah, after that, that we're yeah. calling to know. Sure. <laughs> and uh, the other one, I think like, they... Like uh, Alvin and, and Quentin, we don't know. Well, we don't know. I, I think, think they're we're... looking for opportunities. Sure, yeah. Yeah. sure, sure. 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 But well, it's a beginning, so yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. So what about you? What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a job. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Uh, okay, what's next in ESMA? We need to improve our pipeline. And for the moment, uh, we are speaking with all the teachers, discuss about the last year to improve for the future generation yep. of students. Sure. And we are very confident using more and more Kulini, mm. uh, especially in grooming. Um, Perhaps uh, dive a little bit more in the top net. I didn't use it too much. We mm. didn't use it too much this year, and it's a very powerful tool. I have to dive more and more inside <laughs> All right. because I think we can uh, automate and, and for the right. pipeline is very and useful. Gain, gain more time yeah, to productivity. I've got big expectation with uh, USD format, mm. and, and it's the beginning. Yeah. It just arrived in, in 18. <laughs> And I think especially for us, mm. uh, because we are using Randomon and yeah. Houdini, I think it can really fluidify uh, yeah. the pipeline, the exchange between the softwares, sure. between Maya, Houdini, and um, I think that would be a very great tool. So we'd like to thank uh, a lot of people, uh, especially Tidefx team, to invite us uh, to speak yeah. about Trended and, and, and ESMA. Thank you very much. Yeah, to give us the opportunity to talk about our work and, and what we've done. How we approach it. Yeah, we're very pleased. So thank you very much. And uh, we'd like to thank you all the, the ESMA team, teacher team from behind the camera. Yes. The camera, <laughs> and all the teachers. And teammates. And teammates. And our teammates, yeah. like yeah. students. <laughs> students. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks also to the pro. Yeah. The pros the who the came pro. in. Yeah. Like it gives us a very uh, um, an uh, exterior point of view, very quick exterior point of view. So thanks to them also. And I think that's all. So thank you everyone we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very, but yeah, yeah. Thanks thank everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thanks. thanks.